Hello, my name's Julian Edgar, and I'm the author of the book you see in front of you, Car Electrical and Electronic Systems. What I want to cover in today's video, some of the basics of engine management systems. So let's start off by looking at the overall system just briefly. Here's one. You can see it looks very complicated, but if we break it down, we can see here's the electronic control unit, the brain if you like, here's a throttle body, here's an airflow meter, here are some injectors, and so on. So let's start off by looking at some of the individual parts of a typical engine management system. Now, the first thing to take on board is the electronic control unit, the ECU, needs to know the conditions that the engine is operating under. And one of those conditions it needs to know is what is the temperature of the intake air. And this is an intake air temperature sensor, which sends that information to the ECU. Another thing that the engine management system needs to know is how much air is passing into the engine, the mass of air, the weight of air. And this is a airflow meter from Bosch that measures the mass of air that's passing into the engine. Another way of doing it, and that's the indirect way of doing it, is to measure manifold pressure, the pressure in the intake manifold, and also use the input of how fast the engine is turning, RPM. And if the ECU knows the intake manifold pressure and it knows engine speed, then it can use those to calculate how much air must be passing into the engine. So a MAP sensor, Manifold Absolute Pressure Sensor, is another way of uh, calculating indirectly how much air is passing into the engine. We talked a moment ago about engine speed, engine RPM. The ECU needs to know how quickly the engine is rotating. This is a crankshaft position sensor. It measures uh, the position of the crankshaft, often looks at little teeth on a wheel, and as those teeth go spinning past this sensor, the sensor generates an output that's proportional to engine speed. Very similar sensors are also used on many engines on the camshaft, especially if they've got variable camshaft timing. Here's another sensor, this one's in the exhaust. It measures the amount of oxygen that's in the exhaust, and from that, the ECU can calculate what the air-fuel ratio is, the amount of fuel that's being mixed with the amount of air. It's probably one of the most critical things that the ECU does, try and maintain the correct air-fuel ratio mixtures, and it's, this sensor gives feedback on what's actually happening in the engine. Here's a NOx sensor. Knock or detonation is uh, inappropriate combustion. Instead of the flame front expanding progressively, you have pockets of fuel that explode, can be very, very dangerous, wreck the engine quite quickly, and it can be caused if the ignition timing is too advanced. That's a good example, or in a turbo car, if the turbo boost is too high. So the ECU monitors knock. This is rather like a microphone that's bolted to the engine block, and it listens for the characteristic sound of detonation or knock. Here's a throttle uh, position sensor. This measures how far the driver has the throttle open. On older cars where the driver is directly controlling the throttle by means of a cable, this tells the ECU what the driver is requesting. Here's a speed sensor. This isn't an engine speed sensor, this is a road speed sensor. And in many cars, the ECU needs to know how fast the car is actually traveling down the road. This sensor, typically in the gearbox, sends that information to the ECU. So you can see that the ECU is gaining information from lots of sensors. This is all input information that helps it decide what its output should be. And here's one of those outputs. This is a fuel injector. So the ECU decides on the basis of all of those inputs from all of those different sensors, how much fuel should be going into the engine. And therefore the ECU pulses the injector with what are called differing duty cycles. Just think of it as differing times that the injector is open. And whenever an injector is open, fuel is spraying through it. The other major output of the ECU is to the ignition coils. This is a smart coil, so it's got a little bit of electronics sitting on top of it, and the ECU directly connects to this, doesn't use a coil module in this design, and it operates the coil to provide the spark at the right ignition timing. So those are the two primary outputs of any engine management system, fuel injector pulse width and ignition timing.
So what's doing all this? Well, here's an example of an ECU looking inside it. Um, they're, they're just a mass of electronics with lots of memory and uh, lots of uh, output transistors to drive all these things. This is actually a diesel one, which is why it's got those big capacitors on there to give a big jolt of electricity to open the high pressure injectors. But basically, I just want you to see it as a bunch of electronics on a board. And what's happening inside? Well, it's looking up maps. And here's an example of a map from a Bosch engine management system. On the vertical axis here, we have injection duration. In other words, how long the injectors are open for. Here we have engine speed, and here we have throttle valve angle. So you can see that uh, for any combination of engine speed and throttle opening, the thing, the ECU, not a thing, but the ECU looks up what the appropriate injection duration is and then operates the injectors in that way. Modern ECUs have hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of these sorts of maps. If you're interested in a programmable ECU where you can set up the map, this is basically what you are building. The book's called Car Electrical and Electronic Systems. It's out now. My name is Julian Edgar. Thank you.